Yes, Mr. Weinstein. Now, Your Honor, I would just like to put on the record for today that I was asked to leave the courtroom and I was instructed to leave In a high-stakes legal battle that captured the attention of the music world, the controversial and enigmatic rapper Young Thug found himself standing before the judge, facing charges that could forever change his life. This is the story of Young Thug's court case trial, a captivating journey through the complexities of the justice system and the intersection of art, freedom, and personal responsibility. Young Thug, born Jeffrey Lamar Williams, rose to fame with his unique style and unconventional approach to rap. His magnetic presence and innovative sound quickly garnered him a loyal fanbase and critical acclaim. As the trial unfolds, Young Thug's fans, known as Thugger's Angels, gathered in solidarity, believing in his innocence and standing by him during this trying time. Join us as we delve into the twists and turns of Young Thug's court case trial, a battle that transcends the confines of a legal proceeding and delves into the heart of the music industry, personal identity, and the price of artistic expression. On June 12th, Young Thug made a plea from jail. You know, this isn't about just me or YSL, he said in a pre-recorded address screened at Hot 97's Summer Jam. I always use my music as a form of artistic expression, and I see now that black artists and rappers don't have that freedom. Everybody please sign the Protect Black Art petition and keep praying for us. I love you all, he concluded. The petition to protect black art is a document co-written by 300 Entertainment co-founder and CEO Kevin Lyles, who first signed Thug and helped get his label YSL off the ground as a subsidiary company and Atlanta Records COO Julie Greenwald. The document asks both federal and state legislators to adopt bills that limit the use of rap lyrics as evidence in a court of law. The rapper's plea arrived on the heels of a sprawling 56-count RICO case against Thug, Gunner, and 26 members of his Young Stoner Life collective. The 88-page grand jury indictment characterizes YSL, Young Slime Life, as a criminal street gang and alleges 182 instances of the collective's participating in gang activity and criminal conspiracies, citing lyrics, social media posts, and clothing or accessories with slime emblazoned on them as evidence. Atlanta's Fulton County grand jury charged some individuals with violent crimes that include attempted armed robbery and murder. Both Young Thug and Gunner have been denied bond multiple times. Not only has the case arrived under the specter of a 60% rise in violent crimes in Atlanta, which Fulton County District Attorney Fanny Willis has promised to fight, but it has reverberated through the hip-hop community, where many have argued that this trial is but the latest instance of the criminal justice system unfairly tying rappers to violent crimes through their art. A little over seven months after his arrest in May, Gunner walked free on December 14th. The rapper pleaded guilty to a charge of racketeering conspiracy in what is known as an Alford plea, a deal that allows him to plead guilty if it's in his interest while maintaining his innocence. His five-year sentence was commuted to time served and 500 hours of community service as part of the deal. Days later, seven other defendants took plea deals and were released from jail just ahead of the new year. Young Thug, on the other hand, remains incarcerated and is standing trial. Meanwhile, Thug may have caught another case. Fulton County prosecutors allege co-defendant Khalif Adams attempted to hand the hot rapper a Percocet in open court on January 20th. The Grammy Award-winning artist's lawyer denies Young Thug's involvement in the alleged drug deal. As January came to a close, a YSL Mondo, a label co-founder, publicized his past relationship with the current district attorney Willis, who served as his defense lawyer during a 2019 aggravated asshole trial and helped keep him out of jail. Moreover, prosecutors accused Young Thug of receiving a Percocet pill in open court. His lawyer denied the allegations. The end result of an investigation into yesterday's incident was that Mr. Williams was cleared of any wrongdoing, steel told Rolling Stone. The responsible parties were charged and appeared in court for first appearances this morning. According to a motion filed on January 19th, co-defendant Khalif Adams 
allegedly passed the perk to Thug in an interaction caught by the courtroom surveillance cameras. Those involved. The grand jury indictment identifies Young Thug, Gunner, and 26 other associates as members of the criminal street gang YSL or Young Slime Gang. Thug, the heartbeat of Atlanta's fertile rap scene, is allegedly the founder of this street gang, which formed in the city in 2012. The prosecution claims that YSL has affiliation with the National Bloods Gang, and some associates claim the Blood Subset Gang's Sex Money Murder or 30 Deep. The rapper found record label Young Stone Alive in 2016 as an imprint of 300 Entertainment. YSL Records calls its roster of artists the Slime Family. Gunner was named in the indictment, along with rappers Lil Duke, Yakoti, and Thug's brother Unfung. Fanny Willis is the district attorney overseeing the case. She is a Democrat known for investigating whether the former President Trump and his team engaged in election fraud in Georgia. It does not matter what your notoriety is or what your fame is. If you come to Fulton County, Georgia, you commit crimes, and certainly if those crimes are in the furtherance of a street gang, then you're going to become a target and a focus of this district attorney's office, and we're going to prosecute you to the fullest extent of the law," Willis said in a May 10th press conference. She said there's reason to believe that gangs are committing conservatively 75-80% to of all the violent crime that we're seeing within our community, so they have to be booted. Brian Steele, Young Thug's lawyer, told the New York Times that YSL is not a criminal street gang. Mr. Williams came from an incredibly horrible upbringing, and he's conducted himself throughout his life in a way that is just to marvel at, Steele said. He's committed no crime whatsoever. Gunner's guilty plea for his part serves as a public acknowledgement of his association with YSL, the rapper said in a statement, though he emphasized that his association is purely musical. He staunchly maintains his innocence despite entering a plea deal. Well, I have agreed to always be truthful. I want to make it perfectly clear that I have not made any statements, have not been interviewed, have not cooperated, have not agreed to testify or be a witness for or against any party in the case and have absolutely no intention of being involved in the trial process in any way, Gunnar told WSB and other outlets in a statement. Seven other defendants walked free in late December. Each pleaded guilty to a racketeering charge and said YSL was both a music collective and criminal street gang per the conditions of their plea deals. YSL co-founder Walter Murphy entered a guilty plea on a single count of conspiracy to violate the state's Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act and was sentenced to 10 years in prison. He negotiated one year of his sentence, commuted to time served and nine years of probation per the deal. Unfunk, Lil Duke, Slime Life Shorty, Antonius Ledge, Trontavius Take Stevens, and Antonio Obama Sumlin took similar deals with some pleading guilty to additional charges. Sledge and Stevens, for their part, must testify truthfully if called to trial. Deronte Baby and Tinquarius Mender were offered plea deals but rejected them. A prosecutor asked Slime Life Shorty, whose government name is Wani Lee, if YSL members have committed at least one of the following acts in the name of YSL – murder, aggravated assault, robbery, theft, and or illegal firearms possession – to which he replied, yes ma'am. In addition, Thug was later charged with seven additional felonies after a reported police raid of his Buckhead home following his May 9th arrest. The new charges include possession of drugs with intent to distribute, possession of firearms, and three counts of being a person employed or associated with criminal street gang to conduct or participate in criminal gang activity through the commission of a crime. What's next? Young Thug has been behind bars since his arrest in May and is currently standing trial. In an emergency motion filed May 13th, Thug's lawyer, Brian Steele, blasted his inhumane jail conditions and filed a request for bond, which has since been denied. In the filing, he wrote that Thug has been detained in what amounts to solitary confinement or total isolation in a windowless cement compartment with only a bed and a toilet and an overhead light which remains on 24 hours a day, preventing any sleep, rest or meditation. Steele claims that the rapper has no access to media, including TV or the internet, nor any freedom to exercise, shower or have human contact. Gunner spoke out against poor jail conditions in an Instagram post, sharing an open letter to his 4.4 million followers. 
22 and 2, just a bed and a shower, no windows, just walls, he wrote in the caption. Can't see or talk to anyone. 